Hi, Royal Kingdom Estate family. Welcome back to the platform. We're so excited to be back with another episode of the Real Estate Market. This is the show where we talk about everything with regards to the real estate industry in Ghana, especially. We discuss the market trends and all the factors to consider when it comes to doing transactions or business in real estate. And per usual, we have the head of sales and marketing for Royal Kingdom Estate, Mr. Yamwa, to be giving us some insights on today's topic and today's topic is how can one anticipate eminent domain and involuntary alienation when it comes to acquiring plots hello mr yamo hi Ajoa. how are you doing i'm fine how are you i'm good it's been so long it's been a while <laughs> i think for starters we would um, have to do justice to the topic by explaining to our audience first and foremost what is an eminent domain and what is involuntary alienation all right, so welcome everyone once again. It's been a while. Yeah. We are looking at eminent domain and involuntary alienation. Yeah. They are very simple terms with big names. Okay. So eminent domain basically has to do with government yeah. um, taking over private property. Mm -hmm. So property that belongs to maybe an individual or mm. a group, government basically stepping in to take over that property yeah. or ownership of that property for uh, governmental infrastructure or development or okay. any project whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Key takeaway here is with compensation. With comp Okay, so they actually offer something. Yes, yeah, so to the, the government owners. will compensate okay. um, whoever they are taking the land from. Right. So there's compensation here. Whereas when it comes to involuntary alienation, mm -hmm. there's no compensation. Right. So actually, eminent domain is a form of involuntary alienation okay because with that with involuntary alienation what happens is that transfer of property mm -hmm. or land can happen without the owner's consent okay so you are government can come in and it's not just the government individuals can also um, indulge in involuntary alienation okay the purposes of this discussion will restrict or limit it to the government, to the government so right. they can also step in and take um, acquisition of property from someone but this time around there's no compensation that's like transfer, a forceful takeover more 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 so okay transfer of a property can happen without the consent of the owner so that's the main um takeaway or difference between okay. the eminent domain and the involuntary alienation okay i yes. see that's quite interesting and how can one look out for these factors when they're going to acquire a property how do you even know that the government yeah. will one day come in and swoop your property or someone exactly. will take it by force so it has to do with a lot of due diligence. Okay. A lot of the things in real estate have to do with due diligence mm -hmm. because of the nature of the market, the nature of the industry. And one of the key things to undertake to be able to anticipate either imminent domain mm -hmm. or involuntary alienation is doing the research when it comes to um, the research of the property records. Right. Because you need to be sure or you need to establish the fact that there is no easement or right of way mm -hmm. when when acquiring a property now when we say easement easement simply means um a legal binding agreement right. that um government or the plot is available for government projects probably in the near future that's easement okay. so they can sooner or later step in acquire the property mm -hmm. and use it for government projects or public use. Let's, okay. let's put it out with right. public use. So that's easement. Mm -hmm. Whereas right of way is, so assuming you have a property or mm -hmm. you have a land, right of way also gives whoever, whether government or any individual, mm -hmm. it gives them the legal right mm -hmm. to be able to uh, construct or create a specific route right. through your property. Okay. So if you have a land, let's say by the office, mm -hmm and you have plans for the land the right of way gives me or government mm -hmm. if i have the right of way mm -hmm. or government has it yeah. gives either of us the legal access to be able to create maybe a road mm -hmm. through your land yeah. so assuming you want to use your land for residential property and mm -hmm. we come and create a road through it mm -mm. highly inconvenient exactly. so your plans would have been you know yeah. um neutralized so that is one of the things that everyone needs to look out for okay. when it comes to anticipating these two mm. um, theories or phenomena. So right. you always have to make sure that you have done your research with the property records or regarding the records of the property. Yeah. So that is the first thing that you okay. need to look out but for. Before you go on, I'm sure people are 
probably wondering and this is a case that is actually out there people will say that it's not fair mostly to property owners because imagine i pay money my hard-earned money i use it to acquire um a plot of land put up my property and like let's say seven years down the lane government or maybe a private entity is like okay you want to construct a road through my how <laughs> so no so, well you see uh that is why we, you know, in Ghana, we say lands are held in trust. Right. A lawyer few mentioned this some yes, time back. Exactly. So, some of the the project or some of the developments, mm -hmm. you know, one way or the other, some properties may, may be affected. Yeah. So, is the more reason why you have to take seriously the uh, property research records right. or property rec um, records, mm -hmm. like doing your research on them, because when there's that easement or when there's that right of way you will always know yeah but i mean this is in theory yeah 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 no it's true a lot yeah. of people don't do research when they're yeah. i mean even i mean properties. aside the research mm -hmm. in theory mm -hmm. this is something that's supposed to be there if right. you are doing your research you're supposed to find like find it mm -hmm. if it is there you're supposed to find it but in practicality sometimes set within certain jurisdictions yeah. Uh, there's nothing like easement there's right. nothing like right of way but people or governments will forcefully yeah. have their way mm -hmm. and if you don't have the right backing you know you can't yeah, do. Uh, yeah so okay. it's 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 in theory but yeah okay that's all right that so apart from for. due diligence so another thing that any, everyone has to look out for is the zoning regulation so you have to review okay. zoning regulations now when we talk about zoning it's like it's like land is um zoned or portions of land zoned for specific activities okay so everyone needs to understand the zoning regulations within the jurisdiction where yeah. the plots are mm -hmm. uh, for instance if you come to accra there there are zones for industrial activities yeah there are zones for commercial activities there are places where you, so that is why there are places to i mean for instance someone cannot just wake up and come to cantonment and mm -hmm. say i want to do mining Oh, <laughs> yes. No, yeah. Because of what zoning. Exactly. Can't come here and say, I want to um, explore the potential of oil. Right. Yeah. No. Zoning. Mm -mm. So you need to understand the zoning regulations uh -huh. wherever you find yourself. So that is one of the things. Because if you understand the zoning regulations in that mm -hmm. particular location or area, it helps you to make a decision that if i'm purchasing this plot yeah. it's for commercial purposes mm. it's for residential it's right. for industrial so that you don't end up putting square pegs in round holes and exactly. then later you'll be the victim mm. you purchase plots without understanding the zoning regulations at your own detriment so okay. everyone needs to take okay. that point also seriously okay yes all right wonderful is there anything else another thing that we could look at is checking with your local authorities i mean this is supposed to be a basic mm. thing but it's something that we always need when it comes to acquiring the yes property. um because for you to even understand the zoning regulations you have to check with your, your local authorities and when we say local authorities now we're talking about the municipal assemblies okay. and you know, all these um, regulatory bodies or institutions so yeah. as simple as it might sound mm -hmm. um that's extra or little check will go a long way to yeah. save you um, from some of these inconveniences in the in the um, in the future right. or in the near future. Okay. Another thing that we can also look at is seeking legal advice. Okay. And well, what does that mean? Okay. Now, one of the biggest challenges that we have in our part of the world is seeking the advice of experts. Is it because it's expensive? Um. What do you think? <laughs> I think it's a necessity, but a lot of people ignore it because like of the little fees. And, well, it's not little. Imagine you're going to seek um, the um, expertise of a lawyer. It's not mm. easy, but it's essential at the same time. I think it's a necessary sacrifice. I think people have to look at it from this perspective. If I'm going to spend money, which is going to save me more right. in the near future, mm -hmm. I'd rather spend it than with I mean, hold on to it and end up spending Pay more for later. future damages, yeah. yeah. And seeking legal advice is important because now these legal um, authorities mm. will have, you know, various expertise, knowledge on stuff like eminent domain, yeah. involuntary alienation. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we allow the expert to play their role. Yeah. And so it's important also that we 
take or we prioritize consultancy. Mm. It's very, very important. Oftentimes, you have people come from the diaspora. Now, this is um, just one of the scenarios. Mm -hmm. They come from the diaspora. They want to establish real estate companies. So yeah. They think real estate is flourishing here because of all they see. You don't know the terrain. There exactly. are two, two different terrains. Mm -hmm. The factors are different. Yeah. The target audience you are dealing with, they are different. different. The rules and regulations are Completely different. The different, industry yeah. players, the stakeholders, they are all different. Mm -hmm. So you don't just come in and think that because you have the funds, I mean, in sales, we say cash is king. Okay. So because you have the cash, you can you overrule can just, everything. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. You understand? So yeah. everyone needs to seek advice mm -hmm. when it comes to um, anticipating these some of these things. So okay. Seek legal advice. It's okay. very important. Right. It's not just legal advice. It's every industry player or every relevant stakeholder mm -hmm. when it comes to finding out or anticipating eminent domain yeah. or involuntary alienation. That's wonderful. I think I would like to wrap it up with the title search. Mm -hmm. Now, even though in, in Ghana, it's just Accra mm -hmm. or Greater Accra region, some part of Ashanti that has the, the title titleship, but... Yeah. It also comes back to due diligence, right? So conducting the title search is very important. What, what this also does is that it helps you establish if there has been mm -hmm. any litigation or any um, conflict, conflict or claims mm -hmm. of eminent domain or involuntary alienation. Okay. Because when you are doing your search, mm -hmm. it gives you the history of the land. Right. The ownership over the years, you know, the all the entire chain. If, yes, if there's there been issues, mm -hmm. whatever it is, the transfers and all that. So the type the conducting the title search yeah. or conducting whatever um information search you need, mm -hmm. the information you need is also important because you get to understand the uh the history, okay. the transfer history that the land has gone through. Okay. And it, it, again, it helps you make very relevant decisions. Right. So let's, for, for, for a clearer understanding, let's take an mm -hmm. instance where um, somebody goes in to acquire a property. And then before they put up their structure, there is a claim of eminent domain and the government comes in. They want to use the land for a specific purpose, but they're not able to go through with whatever project they want to um, use the land for. And then whoever um, you come in in that instance and you also come and then purchase the property. If you run the search or if you go through all of these um, procedures that you've mentioned, you'll be able to tell that in the past, the government came in and then yes. they tried to use that particular yes. plot that you are now coming to buy. Yes. Okay, so it would tell you or inform you so that you know that now nah, there's a government claim on this particular land. Yes. So yes. let me move. Yes, it's actually. Carefully. Yes, right. That's the way, carefully, because it gives you a hint or a sense of mm. a looming. I don't know if that's the best word to mm -hmm. use, but um, you are basically able to anticipate right. that if this has happened before, it tells you that this particular location, mm. there could be a repetition of yeah. this same claim. Yeah. So it helps you, it guides you with your acquisition of yeah. land, okay. uh, um, especially with regards to the location. Okay. And you know, when it comes to real estate, mm -hmm. we say real estate is all about what? Location, location, location. 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 Yeah. So it's very important that you're able to go through some of these histories, mm -hmm. get a clear understanding of what the land has been through, mm -hmm. or maybe there's there've been claims as such, mm -hmm. and how you go about them. Okay. So it's important mm -hmm. that everyone undertakes all these points that yeah. I've shared, mm -hmm. just so it helps them to anticipate eminent domain mm -hmm. and involuntary mm -hmm. alienation. Okay. Because at the end of the day, when these things happen to you, when you become mm -hmm. a victim of these two phenomena, trust me it will really cost you yeah. so much and i wouldn't wish for anyone to be in such position i mean yeah. i'm sure you've seen on telly how exactly. sometimes yes. there have been demolitions mm -hmm. and even though some of them have been legally done mm -hmm. no, well i would say they have government has has the the right yeah or yeah they have the legal rights to do that the eviction yeah, procedure it's not has nice. not really gone on well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's always important that we understand some of these things to know how to navigate yeah. our way. So you don't fall victim. Yes. That's yes. wonderful, yes. guys. You have so many points now. Just do your research, know what you're going in for. 
so in the end you don't um, fall victim because it's always always so disheartening when you use your hard-earned money to acquire something and it's taken from you whether legally or not legally so just be mindful and be careful when you're treading in the real estate space especially in these fronts I hope you found this session very interesting and if you need a counsel of an expert always know that Royal Kingdom Estates we're here we offer consultation services if you have doubts on a particular property that you're purchasing just come to us let us help you clear your doubts let us help you with your due diligence we have lawyers on board perfect lawyers we can provide all of these services for you so do subscribe to the channel like the video share it and always stay glued because we have so much content to share with you.